Hi everyone, I'm back. Um, just in the last one and a half hours, I've just uh, posted End of Life Care Chapter 1. Now I want to talk about End of Life Care again, so we're going to continue from where we stopped all the time. So this is End of Life Care Chapter 2. Okay, let's go. Yeah. If we are dealing with bone pain, then we are going to use desomate some 4 to 8 milligram in the morning or naproxen 500 milligram twice daily with misoprostol 200 microgram twice daily or meprazole 20 milligram per hour. Some will use once daily, some will use twice daily. So, neuropathic pain that is bony or diastatic, we can use tricyclic antidepressant, for example, amitriptyline, and I will use nortriptyline in the elderly. We we'll start low, as low as 25 milligram to 50 milligram, and give that per hour once daily, depending on the severity. You could go as high as twice daily or three times a day up to the maximum of 150 milligrams. But watch out for the side effects, and the side effects must be thoroughly explained to the family members. If this is the end of life with bone pain, we are still dealing with that, and neuropathy pain that is shock like or lancinating. Then we're going to give gabapentin and go at 300 milligram per hour at our sleep or pre gabbling 50 to 100 milligram per hour twice daily. We are going to increase either, that is, gabapentin or pre gabbling every week. Somebody is saying, what's the meaning of Q week? That is every week, okay? The nurses, the medical students, the Student nurses and doctors, they understand that, but I'm not taking offense, so that's fine. Um, you can increase that by 50 milligram up to the maximum of 600 milligram. We can add desmetazone if there's severe neuropathic pain that is shock like or lancinating. The aesthetic neuropathic pain means the individual is having an unpleasant, abnormal sense of touch. That's supposed not to be painful, but it's now becoming painful. Delirium. We must look for the causes. We can see it with midazolam or nozina. Our peridol is welcome here. We can also go for second generation antipsychotics that is required. Olanzapine or Risperidol. But while battling you know, with all these and giving all these medications, we have to reassure the family members that, well, the end has come anyway. That we want to do everything to let this person die peacefully, not in any pain whatsoever. Secretions here is called that rattle. The major job here is to educate family members that this is not a sign of suffering. Okay? Then we can use medication to suppress that, like scopola, mean patch. Put out behind the ears and it has sedative effects. So the patient can be knocked off and start snoring if. He or she is the style of stone. And you go, you can, if you don't want that, you can give glycopyrrolate. That is non sedative for detra too. Of course, you sanction. Note this when the patient is unable to swallow, then you change your slow releasing medications, opioids, or whatever. To subcute. Total parenteral nutrition 
is not necessary. There's no need of two fitting. We don't need to call a surgeon to come and put anything anywhere here right now. And if there's dehydration, dehydration will increase endorphins. And that will decrease sensation of hunger and thirst. And of course, decrease pain. That's a way of having natural anesthetic effect. And we're gonna give ice chips, IV fluid or oral swabs. Okay. If you encounter hemorrhage, then we have a big job at hand because we need to take history and physical examination and start rattling in our brain what this could be if the exact cause is not so apparent. So begin to ask. We're not asking the patient, we ask ourselves as the healthcare provider, is this disseminated intravascular coagulopathy? In that case, you might have to do some laboratory investigations, right? Okay. Am I dealing with thrombocytopenia here? I would complete blood count and the platelet level, that would be obvious. Is this von Willebrand disease? But if this is von Willebrand disease, and this is a woman at 90 to 95, why is it that the diagnosis has not been made this time? Because during childbearing or any trauma in the past or any surgery in the past, that diagnosis will likely have been made. Am I dealing with hemophilia? Is this liver failure or liver disease? Because liver is responsible for the production of many of the clotting factors except two. That is factor eight and von Willebrand factor. Those are the only two not you know, producing the liver. So if the liver is in trouble, the clotting cascade is in this array. Am I dealing with anticoagulant use? Mm -hmm. Any aparin, warfarin, already here, or even Zerato, but with renal impairment, I might have you know, something difficult to deal with here. Is this the aftermath of massive transfusion? Is this sepsis? Because you might not actually peak high temperature in elderly people. So I'm not going to uh, stoop low and be waiting for the time that the temperature will be rising before I will think that I'm dealing with sepsis in an elderly patient. No, no, emphatically no. So could be sepsis. Yeah, the temperature is within normal range. Okay, so not necessarily uh, low temperature or high temperature in sepsis, like we might find in other patients. When it comes to elderly, it might not be so. I'm going to check the neck region for large mass. If there's uh, any swelling there, there's hematoma where blood has accumulated, any issue of trauma, as this elderly man or woman fallen recently and had some you know, concealed fracture somewhere. And if you're able to find any obvious bleeding or bleeding artery anywhere, we're, we're going to stop that if possible. And with that, it might be winning as far as hemorrhage is concerned. Still on end of life treatment, everything we're going to do will be based on patient's choice. And the choice of the patient will be the first thing to be considered because after all, he or she is the one leaving us soon. The family and substitute decision maker could make choice, but must be in the best interest of the affected patient. We might not go solo here, might have to decide with other doctors, and of course, can have your midazolam at hand, five milligrams of kit.
at last minutes. While you're on your feet, and the nurses on their feet, the family members standing, the grandkids, the great grandkids are willing. The scene that is going to be very, very uncomfortable for everybody. You can be watching the patient and you might be picking dyspnea, gasping, decreased level of consciousness, can't eat, can't drink, can't talk, can't walk. As a matter of fact, some of us who had witnessed this will remember the very last words that the affected person would have spoken. I remember the last words from my mouth. So the medications are no longer effective at this stage. You will notice more. Check the extremities, it will be cold, clam extremities. He or she is about to go. Hmm. It's a difficult period, difficult minutes. My heart goes to everyone who has experienced this, watching their loved ones going, and to those who will still go through it. It is inevitable. It will happen to me one day. Now rounding up. Remember, I have pulled this at the beginning and I'm putting it now again. Remember, it is a teamwork. The doctor might be the leader of the team, but don't deny the dying patients and the family members of the religious rules, cultural practices, religious leader, palliative care team, social workers, let all family members that are around be in the room. Explain every step and medications that we may be administering with possible side effects. Let them say goodbye. Be empathic. Put yourself in their shoes. Show concern. Don't be rude. Be kind. Oh, hmm. you can see this plant, young grain growing right now. Our life is like that. At the point where kids being helped by our parents, and later on. If we have the chance to grow to old age, we become like kids again, the two ends of life. So this plant is growing one right now. One day it will stop growing and will die. And that is the end of this plant. And with that analogy, I've come to the end of the topic that is the end of life care on its own. So the end of everything is the end of life. Kindly subscribe to my channel so that we can go through many topics before we reach the end of life, okay? And I will be ready to answer your questions if you drop messages, questions for me at the coming session. Thanks for listening. Kindly subscribe to my channel so that you can get my presentations immediately they are published. Thank you. I appreciate it.